In this video, we're going to take a look at quadratic inequalities. Now, this is a topic that you would have covered in GCSE Maths, so I'm not going to take too much time here introducing this as a topic. So let's just jump straight into the questions. So if we, if we begin with the first question here, this is split into two parts here. I've got part A and part B. So if we start with part A, this is hopefully nice and straightforward because all I've got here is a nice linear inequality. So I've got 5x minus 3. So 5x minus 3 is less than x plus 5. So where do we begin here? Well, remember when we're solving um, linear inequalities like this, all I want to do is isolate the x. So I'm going to get rid of this x here on the right hand side and to that we subtract x off both sides of this inequality. In that case, we get 4x minus 3 is less than 5. Again, we're looking to isolate the x here. So in that case, I need to add 3 now to both sides to get rid of this minus 3 on the left hand side. So we add 3 to both sides. That gives me 4x is less than 8. And finally, again, we're just isolating for x here. So we just divide by the coefficient of x, which is 4. So therefore, x is less than 2. So that's the solution to part A. Let's take a look at part B now. So hopefully, you can recognize what part B here is. And this is a quadratic inequality. When we expand this bracket here with the term on the outside, we're going to get a quadratic here. So I'm going to get x squared. We get x squared plus 5x plus 5x minus 12 is greater than 2. Now, when we're solving quadratic inequalities like this, think of it as like a, an equation. We set it equal to zero. So what I want to do is get rid of this 2 here on the right-hand side of this inequality. So to do that, we subtract 2 off both sides. We get x squared plus 5x minus 14 is greater than zero. Now, here, once we get a quadratic that is greater than, less than, something like that, that to zero in that case, all I do now is I just factorize it. So again, we're just thinking about this as an equation, set it equal to zero, and now we factorize. So in that case, we get two brackets here. And we'll have an x at the front of both of these brackets. Two numbers now that multiply to give me minus 14, but add to give me positive 5. In that case, we can have positive 7 and minus 2 there. Okay. Now what I want to do here is I just want to sketch this quadratic. Okay, so if we sketch this here. What are we going to get? Well, let's say we get something that looks like this. Okay, that's my y axis. This is my x axis here. So it's going to cut through at minus 7. Let's just say that's there. And positive 2. Again, let's just say that's there. This is just a sketch, it doesn't have to be perfect. And it will cut through the y axis at minus 14. Okay, joining all this up here, what I'm going to get is something that looks kind of like this. Something like that it should be a little bit neater, but you get the idea. So what we're looking for now is where is this greater than zero? Okay. So when we say where is this greater than zero, what we mean is where is this above the x-axis? So there's two places for this. And let's do this with a different pen color. Let's use orange. So two places where this is above the x-axis, we've got everything to the right here of two, but anything greater than two, and everything to the left of minus seven. Okay, so anything smaller. Minus 7. So the way we present the solution here, we say that x is greater than 2, or x is less than minus 7. Okay. Notice that the inequality symbol here matches what we start with. If this was greater than or equal, then this would be x is greater than or equal to 2, or x is less than or equal to minus 7. Okay. So again, just take care there with your symbols. So that's the solution to part B. And finally, let's take a look at one more question here, which is split into three parts. So in part A, hopefully nice and straightforward. Again, we've just got a simple linear inequality here. So what I'm going to do to begin with here is just expand this bracket. So we're going to get 3x minus 3 is less than or equal to 11 minus x. What I want to do now is isolate the x. So I want to go to this minus x here. So I'm going to add x to both sides. So we get 4x minus 3 is less than or equal to 11. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add 3 to both sides. And it gets rid of this minus 3 here on the left-hand side of our inequality. So we get 4x is less than or equal to 14. And then finally, divide by the coefficient of x here. So divide both sides by 4. We get that x is less than or equal to 14 over 4. 
for 14 over 4, but remember this is just the same as 7 over 2. Okay, so x is less than or equal to 7 over 2 there. Okay, so that's our solution to pi a. So hopefully that was nice and straightforward. Now for part b here, what I've got is a quadratic inequality, but this is nice and straightforward because it's already been factorised. So all I need to do here is just sketch the quadratic and then present the solution. So my axes are going to look something like this. That's my x-axis. That's my y-axis. So we've got two solutions here. We've got minus 2. Let's say that's minus 2 there. And then we'll have 9 over 2. So if I say that's there, 9 over 2. And it will also cut through the y-axis, and that will be at minus 9 times 2. So that would be minus 18. OK, let's say that's there. Now if I join all this together, what are we going to get? We'll get something that looks like this. Should look a little bit neat. That's definitely not a nice sketch, but we get the idea. Um, we get our U-shaped quadratic. Now we're looking for where this is less than zero. So where is this below the x-axis? And if we do this using a different pen color again, just to highlight this, well, this will be this region here. Okay, this is where it's below the x-axis. Now to present this as a solution, what we say here for our range of values is the variable that we're solving for here x so x lies between minus 2 so minus 2 and 9 over 2 okay notice that the inequality symbol that we have here matches what we um, have in our question okay if that was less than or equal to zero then we'd need the equal symbol here as well for our inequality okay but there we have it so that's our solution to part b and if we just take a look at part C underneath here, um, again, let's just use a different color for this. So part C, we're now looking for the range of values of x for which both part A, so notice this is part A, and this is part B now. Okay, so where is the quadratic inequality? Um, oh, sorry, not the quadratic inequality, but where is the inequality solved for both of these regions? Okay, or both of these um, inequalities. Well, the easiest way to probably think about this is just, just to draw a number line. Okay, so if I just draw a number line here. Um, what have we got? Well, I've got basically between minus 2 and 9 over 2. And we're saying that x is less than or equal to 7 over 2. So let me just put all that on the number line. So I've got minus 2, say, here. That's minus 2. We've got, say, 7 over 2 here. And we've also got 9 over 2. Okay. And let's just say that's our number line. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just so we can actually visually represent what's going on. Now, if I just kind of draw on what's going on here. So we're saying that part B is between minus 2 and 9 over 2. Okay, so that's everything here. Okay, like so. But notice in part A, we said that x must be less than or equal to 7 over 2. So we've got to be slightly careful here, because if I do this in a different color, we're saying everything to the left of 7 over 2. Okay, anything smaller or, or equal to 7 over 2. So starting from here, everything to the left. Essentially, we're looking for where is the intersection, and where is this true for both part A and part B. And in that case, we can see then, we get this region here where we shaded both of them. So that would be here to here. Okay, that's this region. Now we have to be slightly careful in how we present the solution. And what I mean by that is the inequality symbols. Because notice when we have this minus 2 here, this is a strict inequality. But for pi a, this wasn't a strict. This could include the 7 over 2. So when we present the solution here to part c, what we're saying is that x lies between these two values here. Okay, so minus 2. This is for the variable x here. But for our upper bound of our inequality here, then this is equals as well. So it's nine, uh, sorry, 7 over 2 there. For the upper bound okay because that's where it was here okay so let me just write that again it looks a little bit messy so minus two including the seven over two there okay and there we have it so that's our solution to part c there okay and that brings us to the end of this video on quadratic inequalities in the next video what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some exam revision for quadratic simultaneous equations and quadratic inequalities.